All right, I, so are we starting now? Is that what's happening? Okay. All right, so first of all, let, let me just review the Feynman rules for QED. Well, let me say what they are. Um, first of all, what's the Lagrange density? It's minus a quarter F mu nu, F mu nu um, plus psi bar I gamma mu D mu plus I E A mu minus M and E if we're talking about electrons, psi, there. That's about it. Um, the convention here is that E is positive, and the current here, J mu, is minus E psi bar gamma mu psi. We saw that it was conserved before. OK, now, um, let me see if I can. With F mu nu, there is always um, potential for a sign error, so let me just remind you what the notation here is for that. It's uh, D mu A nu. So F mu nu here is D mu A nu minus D mu A nu. Um, I think for pedagogical reasons you should avoid unnecessary use of Greek because we're not Greek, uh, most of us at least. Um, and, uh, but unfortunately I get sucked into it because it's just so universal. Alright, so now what are these um, Feynman rules? The I'm going to go over here where the board is a higher quality board. So let's imagine we've got some process. We draw the diagram, and it's got some outgoing particles, P prime with outgoing electrons, outgoing positrons, outgoing photons. And in here, there are vertices like that. And then uh, somewhere there'll be a propagator from one vertex to another, uh, say K, and there'll be a, uh, an electron propagator like that. And then there'll be incoming electrons, incoming positrons, uh, incoming photons, and for some reason we keep the index on these. So what do we do? Well, first of all, of course, you, 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 you draw all the Feynman diagrams that are relevant to the process you're looking at. And then with each of these outgoing things, you associate for First prime rule is get rid of charge. <laughs> um, U bar P prime S prime, so that's for an outgoing electron. For an outgoing positron, it's, Q, it's B of uh, Q prime S prime, and for an outgoing photon, it's E star mu of K prime, I guess. Okay. For a vertex, what you put in is minus I E gamma mu. Um, for a photon line, minus I eta mu nu over k squared plus I epsilon. For this line, and that's only for the Coulomb gauge and a yeah 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 yeah. Well, the deal is you quantize in the Coulomb gauge, 
you have the uh, instantaneous potential. You then have that miserable propagator. And then you realize that you can replace the miserable propagator with a nice propagator if you ignore the Coulomb, instantaneous Coulomb interaction. So that's, that's the deal. Um, it sounds like um, a Faustian bargain, but it's actually a bargain. Do any of these other, like does this vertex thing you add depend on that at all? No. Okay. All right. Now, this propagator is um, I P slash plus M over P squared minus M squared plus I epsilon. And then finally, these incoming ones. An incoming electron is UPS, otherwise known as Big Brown. An incoming positron. Why is, why is that? <laughs> That's actually an interesting story. Um, B bar of Q and S, I'll, I'll get to it in a second. And then the incoming photon is F is the polarization F vector epsilon U of K. Okay. So that's the whole thing. These quantities give us something called I M. And the um, actual uh, S matrix element is 2 pi to the fourth, delta fourth of all of the outgoing minus the incoming four momenta times I M. Okay. There are more minor defining rules, though, that are really just sort of caveats. Namely, watch out for minus signs because there are fermions in the theory. And um, that's probably it for quantum molecular dynamics. For other theories where you have phi to the fourth or phi cubed, then you have to watch out for combinatorial factors. And the original way in which I did these S matrix computation by actually expanding e to the minus the time order product of e to the minus i integral interaction Hamiltonian d fourth x. That way, if you expand that carefully and keep track of everything, you get the combinatorial factors right and you get the minus signs right. If you're careful, the minus signs were right last time. Um, So let's, oh, the big brown. It turns out that um, UPS is a well-managed company in which the management actually cares about the employees. And um, when they bought out a company in, in um, New York that uh, was a competitor, they kept all the employees. And the person who ran, loaned the company was so grateful that he named his racehorse Big Brown, which was the, 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 the sort of verbal acronym of UPS because they've been driving around in Big Brown trucks for 50 or 60 years. And um, it turns out the horse won one of the derbies. But um, anyway, that's the story. The, 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 my understanding is that UPS is related to FedEx the way Costco is related to Walmart. And, uh, so basically, use UPS, <laughs> shop at Costco, and ignore the others. All right, so, um, I'm trying to get sued. But anyway, um, Okay, so now, uh, th so those are the Feynman rules, and you see the, 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 the one of the rules is watch out for minus signs, and it's and keep track of combinatorial factors, and, and there's, there's no there's no really neat way to do that one. But now we're going to uh, apply these to e plus e minus goes to mu plus mu minus. Let's see, was there a question? There was a question, why Big Brown? I guess that's worth a anchor. <laughs> <laughs> With you, right? All right. 
Um, these S's on the bottom could potentially be different, right? I mean, one oh, be of course. Absolutely. I should have called it T. No, I don't want it. No, you're hungry. I don't want it. <laughs> really? Yeah, I don't want it. <laughs> okay, the interaction of Hamiltonian here, which we might as well just call V of X, in this particular case is minus E psi bar for the electron, gamma mu psi electron A mu, but then it's also minus E psi bar muon A mu, well, gamma mu. Psi muon A, well, obviously we want to call that a new there. Uh, otherwise, it just looks silly. So, this again is a problem. I mean, it's perfectly all right to use mu for the muon, but we'd be better off if, well, I, I don't know, on the fly, I don't know, to switch to Latin letters. The Feynman diagram, luckily, is only one because it's the electron comes in, positron comes in, and I'm following here the Peskin Schroeder uh, uh, computation. And so I'm using there K nu, K prime. Okay, so that's the Feynman diagram. So why can't I have the other type where I have electron, positron, and then a photon between, and then muon? Because there isn't any vertex electron, muon, photon. No, okay. See, we have muon, muon, photon, electron, uh, electron, uh, photon. Nice. All right, that's a great. That was a great question. Um, certainly worth candy. <laughs> <Not one. laughs> All right. Okay, so this is simpler then than the one we did, Baba, which is called Baba scattering, by the way. E plus E minus goes E plus E minus is Baba scattering. Is it is it possible that if there's another is it possible that there could be another term in the interaction Hamiltonian that had a vertex like that? Or does that never happen? You mean a mu E photon? Yeah. Great question. Um, I think, I mean, that's an experimental issue, right? Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, but I mean, I could write down a, a term that. Yeah, term. you could write down a term. Do it, right? It'd be Lorentz invariant, gauge invariant, and so forth. Um, and um, So is it the case that experimentally well, that's... Well, all right. Yeah. What, excuse me? Is it the case that experimentally that's not observed? Well, that's for sure. Okay. Is experimentally, are these coupling constants in front of each of them known to be exactly Experimentally, the experimentally, they're known with an experimental error to be the same. Uh -huh. Well, uh, something closely related to your question there occurs if... Um, occurs when we bring in uh, quarks or we bring in uh, the neutrinos as well as the charged leptons. And in those cases, what you do is you want, to, you want the quadratic Hamiltonian to be diagonal. And so you want the basic fields in which you do perturbation theory to be uh, eigenstates of mass. And then you just take what you get in the interactions after you've done that. And in the case of neutrinos, what you've got then is with uh, W's and Z's, you've got various things like E and various news here. So you have funny vertices. Okay, well, if we apply the Feynman rules to this diagram, um, things work out perfectly. There's no extra minus sign. And we get that IM is equal to, well, we have a, um, let's look down here. We have a U coming in. So we have U of P and S. Then we have a vertex. 
So we put in minus I E down mu. And then we have an incoming positron, and that gives us a V bar. So we have V bar of P prime S prime. So in this case, well, our Q T. Anyway, P prime S prime. So we've done this part. Now we've got a photon propagator, and that's this. And so we have um, minus I uh, eta mu nu over k squared. And in, in this particular case, we know what k is. It's p plus p prime. Uh, and you can put in a minus I epsilon, but it doesn't matter. It's on the tree level diagram like this. A diagram without a loop is in the trade called a tree level diagram. Those are the kind that you'll grow to love. <laughs> because they don't have to get complicated. All right, now we've got this situation here where we've got an outgoing electron, so that's U bar. And uh, it'll be K, I guess, uh, oh, K, KR. R is the index that he was using. So SS prime R a vertex minus i e, and now we have to use gamma nu. We, we, when I said mu here, it's not that you fixate on the on mu. It's just one of the gamma matrices. And um, then you've got an outgoing positron, so that's a v of k prime r prime. And that's the whole thing. So obviously, um, once you get good at doing Feynman diagrams, using Feynman rules is, you know, it saves easily 15 minutes of fussing around with the, with the interaction Hamiltonian, moving the fields around, keeping track of the minus sign. And if you're dealing with a process where there's only one diagram, then you don't have to worry about the relative sign because it goes away when you take the absolute value. All right, well. What absolute value are we talking about? Well, this thing is an amplitude. This S matrix thing is an amplitude. And you get a probability, you take the absolute value squared. Um, now you see what you've got is you've got three minus I E's, which gives you all together I E squared. So this thing is I e squared v bar p prime s prime gamma mu u, not u bar, sorry, p s. And now this eta mu nu is just going to lower this nu and make it a mu. So this is then u bar of k r gamma lower mu v of k prime r prime. And down here, um, we can call it p plus p prime squared um, if you want. It, it, it uh, doesn't really matter. OK, so that's, our, that's what I m is. And s is 2 pi to the fourth energy moment conserving delta function times I m. So is there still an extra alpha or beta label on the v's and the u's? Yes. So then those things are just numbers, right? I mean, if I fix alpha or beta? Right. And so what, we, what we've got here, you see, is V, say, A, A, B, B. And then over here, we've got maybe alpha, alpha, beta, beta. OK, that's how it looks. So now I can just move everything around to however I want. Absolutely. And you want to do that at a certain point. So let me, let's um, see that what we're going to need is m squared. And so we need to know how to deal with something like that. So let's look at something that's v bar gamma mu u. We're going to need to take a conjugate of that. 
which, in, uh, which of course is a sum, A, A, B, B. But this thing is already a little bit complicated. In other words, it's actually V star A, gamma zero A, B, gamma mu B, C, U, C, star. But if we go back to matrix notation, this thing is uh, V dagger gamma zero gamma mu u, and now we're taking the complex conjugate. So this is u dagger gamma mu dagger gamma zero dagger v in major notation. Now, um, gamma zero is 0, 1, 1, 0. And gamma vector is 0 sigma minus sigma 0. So gamma 0 is equal to gamma 0 adjoint. But gamma is minus gamma adjoint. Because the big sigmas are Hermitian, but there's a minus sign. Transpose. Okay. All right, so that means that this thing is u dagger gamma mu dagger gamma zero v. Now we have these various commutation relations which define the gamma matrices, namely gamma a gamma b anti commutator, which is to say gamma a gamma b plus gamma b gamma a is 2 A to AB. And so that means that gamma 0 commutes with gamma 0. Obviously, gamma 0 commutes with gamma. Anything commutes with itself. So gamma 0 commutes with gamma 0. But um, gamma I, uh, anti-commutes with gamma zero, because if you have an i and a zero here, you get zero on the right-hand side, so they anti-commute with each other. So, the one, so for gamma zero, where you don't get a minus sign from the dagger, you can just move the gamma zero through, or just leave it there, because it's just gamma zero. When it's gamma i, you get a minus sign, but then you move the gamma zero through, and you get another minus sign. So altogether, this is equal to u dagger gamma 0 gamma mu v, which is equal to u bar gamma mu v. So this thing that we're, that we started with, v bar gamma mu u, is actually real. It, it's real, in the, well, I shouldn't have said it's real. It, under complex conjugation, it just goes into u bar gamma mu v which is a very nice property, which is why people have stuck the gamma zero in there so many times. Why we deal with psi bar and u bar rather than psi dagger and u dagger. The bar makes life much easier. This is a little clearer in the notes, which I should have followed, I guess. All right, so let's, let's look at um, the initial, the electron spinner part of this thing when we take the absolute value squared. So what we'll have is V bar gamma mu u absolute value squared. And so this is V bar gamma mu u complex conjugate V bar gamma mu u. And we just saw that was u bar gamma mu v, v bar gamma mu u. Now, uh, you see, this is a very nice structure here. Because v, v bar is the thing that if you sum over the uh, two spin states, you get um, a nice uh, p slash minus m. Or in this case, p prime slash minus m. 
So what we do is If we're going to be, what we're, what we're going to do is we're going to, be, well, let's put it this way. If we don't sum over the spins, this is complicated. Now there are computer programs that deal with, with that do a lot of the, a lot of the mechanical work in finding diagrams. And uh, if you ever do a thesis involving serious finding diagrams, you probably want to use them. But. Um, what we want to do is just look at the ordinary experimental situation in which you normally don't have polarized beams coming in and you normally don't detect the polarization going out. So we're going to average over the incoming spins and sum over the final state spins in, of m squared. And uh, so that means that we just divide by 4 and sum over all the spins. So this thing, so we're going to be able to sum over that and get uh, our, uh, our expression. And what we're going to have then for m squared, inside m squared, uh, what we're going to have then is this, u bar gamma mu v, v bar gamma mu u, and then the muon part is going to be v prime bar gamma, uh, let me get this one, actually, uh, yeah, I, I mean, this was true here, but let me, let me, let me do this thing in a little more, um, let's, let's go to the thing that we actually have here. So what we've got is V bar gamma mu u, u bar prime gamma mu v prime star. In other words, this is this whole amplitude. In other words, it's um, u bar gamma mu v, v bar gamma mu u. And then that times its complex, uh, its complex conjugate times itself. And so then we then have v bar gamma nu u, u bar prime gamma nu v prime. So that's what we wind up with. And that then gives us u bar gamma mu v, v prime bar gamma lower mu u prime v bar gamma nu u u bar prime gamma nu v prime and now we move these things um, around so that we get u bar gamma mu v v bar gamma nu u, v bar prime gamma mu u prime, u bar prime gamma nu v prime. So is it the case that each of these sets of three, u Two. gamma v, or is it true that each of these sets of three things, spinner, gamma, spinner, yeah. commutes with another construction? Oh yeah, these are just numbers now, it's just complex numbers. Okay. This yeah. is a four vector, a four yeah. by four matrix, a four vector. Well, four vector, four component vector, not a four vector. Mm -hmm. And in other words, this thing, V bar gamma mu u, u bar gamma mu v, that's this thing, but with u replaced by nu. This is the complex conjugate of that thing. But we're summing over nu here, and we have to just you have to use two different letters because they're independent sums. Okay, so it's the sum over nu times the complex conjugate of that, but in this case we use a different we use a mu. And um, so then I just 
applied the complex conjugation to these two guys. And then you want to have the VB bar together, so you just move these like that. And now you've got projection on when you sum, you've got a projection operator there. Uh, you've got a projection operator here. And now what we're going to do is, well, let me, let me follow my notes clearly here. Let's just look at the sum over SS. We're just looking at the electron part. So we're looking at this part. So what do we have? We have U bar alpha of P and S, gamma mu alpha beta, V beta of P prime S prime, V bar A of P prime S prime, gamma nu A B, U B of P and S. And we're summing over S and S prime. But before doing that, well, we are doing that. Uh, this is gamma mu alpha beta, V beta, P prime S prime, V bar, Uh, A, P prime, S prime, gamma, nu, A, B, U, B, P, S, U bar, alpha, P, S. Okay. And now we can go to, we can, we can say that V beta, V bar A summed over S prime, well, this is P prime slash minus M. And then over here, UB, U bar alpha summed over S is P slash plus M. So this is averaging over initial polarization yes. between two, two particles? Right. So if it was the case that if one had, say, a definite spin and the other one had a definite spin, oh. wouldn't you get simplifications? Because there'd be lots no. of zeros. There wouldn't be zeros that's in places? Worse. It's worse. Yeah, it's terrible. Uh -huh. Well, I mean, I, I shouldn't say it's terrible. Be grateful. <laughs> but, you know, with computers, once you've got a debug, I think CERN has something called root, which probably allows you to do Alright, so what do we have? This thing then is actually gamma mu alpha beta P prime slash minus M beta alpha gamma nu A B P slash plus M B alpha. But this is a trace, and traces are your friend. They're not as good as delta functions, but they're pretty good. So this is the trace of gamma mu, p prime slash minus n, gamma nu, p slash plus n. Did I tell you that, I don't know if I told you this story, but I, when I was a first year graduate student, I missed a class of Schwinger's quantum mechanics. And I came back and um, I saw this on the board in many places. And, I, and he hadn't yet introduced H bar when I, before I missed the class. And I came back and I thought, gee, he brought in H bar. He's using it in a very funny way. And I finally <laughs> realized it was a trace. <laughs> All right. Okay, so we've done the incoming spinners. At least we've reduced them to a trace. The outgoing ones, what do they look like? Well, the outgoing ones are U bar P 
WV evaluated in K and R and K prime R prime times the complex conjugate of that. So is it true that this looks like a trace times another trace to me? Is it true that those things no, that this is a trace. This is that with the, that top line there, right? Because it's summed over beta, but the other one's summed over B. So it looks like one trace. You know, one. you know, you are absolutely right, and I think there's an error here in my notes. Gamma, beta, and then one trace multiplied by another trace. Beta, 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 beta. Yeah, all right. There's a. There's no. a Beta A. Ah, this is beta A. Okay, it's beta A. Then we have gamma AB. <laughs> then this thing is B alpha, and then there's an alpha. So now it looks like it. Now it's the way you want it, right? Alpha, beta, beta A, AB, B alpha. Summed over everything. So it's the total trace. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, brilliant. I wonder if my notes are actually my Well, I'll check them. All right, so let's do the outgoing ones. Now we have a sum over R and R prime. And we have V bar, R, V bar, K prime, R prime, gamma mu. U of K and R, U bar of K and R, gamma nu, V of K prime R prime. So that's what happens when you take the absolute value squared of uh, this. And so now I, I'll, I'll just skip to the answer. Do you, you want me to go through in detail, or do you want me to just skip to the answer? It's pretty similar to this one, right? Yes. Then skip to the answer. Trace gamma mu k slash plus m mu. Now this, of course, was m e because these were electrons coming in. This is now muons going out. So that's what it is. Okay. So one quarter sum over S S prime R R prime of M squared is then, well, what is there in M apart from these uh, spinners and gamma matrices? There's an E squared and what, um, uh, that's what Schroeder called Q, which is Q plus B squared. So when we square it, we get E to the fourth over four Q to the fourth where Q is P plus P prime. Um, and then we have a product of two traces. Trace of P prime slash minus ME gamma nu P slash plus ME gamma mu times trace of K slash plus M mu gamma nu, k prime slash minus and mu gamma nu. Okay. Now we're going to make a slight simplification by um, ignoring me. Me is less than mu by a factor of 200. And um, it turns out that, um, as Pest Control to point out, that the higher order terms, in other words, diagrams like, uh, well, let's see, maybe I'll do that here. Diagrams like um, 
12 a vertex here. I mean, a, a, an extra photon there, or um, let's see, one. Yeah. One. Well, I'm having trouble thinking of extra things. I mean, obviously, you can have one here. Um, Anyway, all sorts of other diagrams that could occur. 